What it is, people? It's your boy, Doggy Diamonds. Another episode of Doggy Diamonds No Filter. Today, I got a special guest or two that I've interviewed before. One was not too many years ago. One was like my second interview ever. So I'm going to let them introduce their self. To my right, we have... Oh, I'm Chris Rivers. Dragons up. And to my right is the one and only mother of Chris Rivers. <laughs> <laughs> Liza <laughs> Rios. <laughs> Liza, Liza. You got to be Liza Rivers today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nah, nah, she go through it. <laughs> People get upset. They're yeah. like, "Oh, he 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 abandoned his Hispanic roots." I'm like, "No, nigga, it's a rap name." Yeah, like, <laughs> and it still means rivers. Right? Yeah, r- yeah, rivers means yeah. reels in Spanish. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, uh, but yeah, I just wanted something like it flows and you know something to flip it. But people yeah. are just weird, man. But 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 your real name is you told me you mm-hmm. are a junior. Junior Christopher Chris- Lee Rios Junior. Wow. And if they don't, if y'all don't know who Christopher Lee Rios is, y'all need to do your homework. But that's, that is that's the legend. Facts. Is 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 your father a legend? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, th- I think it's unanimous. I think even the people that uh, probably don't know much about him could at least say like and know that stigma. Like he is a legend. Yeah. What, what makes somebody legendary? Uh, I think uh, I will say that you don't need to die to be a legend. It, <laughs> do, it does. <laughs> it does help. Yeah, 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 <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, because yeah. everyone wants to, you know, even me, I'm I'm a uh, I'm one of those people that like I listened to Nipsey beforehand, Facts. but after he passed, I got put on because of everyone supporting him more after he passed, I got put on to the stuff that he did beyond the music more and then it, you know, it, it heightened that. So I think my father, I think uh when you're a legend, uh you reached a certain status in uh where you were. And I think everyone that I consider legendary, they mastered themselves. It doesn't necessarily mean that they were better than each other, but like Bruce Lee reached maximum Bruce Lee before level. he died you know what I'm saying yeah before he died he reached like and obviously there was places that he could have went even further if he had more time but he was one of those people that like mastered himself I think my father was meant to do what he did he found his calling and he and he went ridiculous with it and then the timing was also pivotal enough for someone with his specific talent in that timing to to have an impact that it did because if he came out today it wouldn't be the same he wouldn't be the first latin to go platinum he wouldn't i mean obviously the world would be different but even that sort of rap is not glorified as much now as it was in the 90s so man if that big pun hit right now the way that shit hit then i don't care it's 2000 it could be 2052 when i first heard your father i said what the fuck is no, that? Facts. <laughs> but your ears were conditioned at that time to still there's people now who yeah, yeah, there's yeah, kids yeah. now the kids now, bro, if you played uh uh You Ain't a Killer, they like, Where's the turn up? Yeah, like, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like and, and that's what I'm saying. Like, you can't get gra- jiggy with yeah, it. and granted yeah, there's yeah. gonna be a still a huge I'm I'm saying it wouldn't be because um it can't what he did can't be replicated because of the timing as well. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? He was the first Latin rapper to go platinum. He broke down the doors and certain, you know, and in that time period where it was before uh, these things, you facts, know? Facts, so facts. you couldn't really see him unless you saw him. He said it himself, everybody thought he was black. You know what I'm saying? So you see the Spanish person, the impact, the way culture was, the way the world was, technology, it just, it was the perfect timing mixed with the perfect individual who mastered themselves that, uh, that, that orchestrated this series of events that gave him this legendary monster. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, you know, it's 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 undeniable when yeah. it's all those things combined. It's like this was foretold, like it was written. I, it, it's crazy because he's one of those who was a legend off the first verse. Yeah. The, the Snoops, legend mm-hmm. off the first verse. The first, Like the people who are legends, it didn't take them long to be legends. Oh, to be established, right. Yeah, and it was less like, yo, when you first heard Deep Cover, you was like, yo, who's that with Dre? We know you who knew. Dr. Dre is, Yeah, but who's that? So when I, what was the first song you um? I don't know the first song, but I don't know the second verse that he wrote was uh, "Cannibalism Living in My Metabolism," catching as and rats and baby wrote, baptism. He that that, that whole in, yeah. And, uh, and yeah, Mando was like a year old. He yeah, was in like a '92, but then he used it later on. Yeah, that was like, and him. um, and he had like the ice cream freestyle, like certain like really God, early stuff. Yeah, 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 the really early stuff that he put out that even before when his voice when he was lighter when he was lighter in weight, so his uh-huh. voice was even more mm-hmm. different. And uh-huh. then um, he started popping more. But when you really think about it, he only had uh two studio albums during his yeah. time. So within two studio albums, like, he really, didn't even complete and, the second yeah, he didn't even complete the second album really. And then the third album is just the greatest hits compilation that mm. Ninja Species. 
Rikishi. So he really only was here for no, a couple. No, no, let's get let's he had three because he wrote Fat Joe out. Yeah, well, let, we well, gotta yeah. count that. But yeah, we no, got we, to. we 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 I mean, could. You know, well, but you go you go that that's discography. You feel yeah, me? Yeah, like yeah, when, yeah, when you talk you, about because the you. masses don't really fully know that. You know got what I mean? So it's one of those things when you see him like he's only here for a couple of years and he's only here like for a short amount of time and he established himself like almost more, almost like Biggie though. Yeah, yeah. Biggie was only Biggie came out in like ninety four, but by ninety seven he was, he was gone. gone. Yeah, you know Three what I mean. Years. And and that's it what, seems so long. Though. So you see, some people have ten year careers eight year, and don't mm-hmm. have that. And granted, there are people who just because you're famous doesn't mean you're the best. Yeah. I think I think especially today. You know what I mean? Like I think most of the people who are famous are far from the best at what they do. Uh so there's a lot of, you know, luck and media involved and tactics and stuff like that, but I do feel like he capitalized like to be able to capitalize off that moment in such a short period of time and then I see people on the bus 20 years after he passed with tattoos like you you never met this person and you decided to immortalize him on your flesh the Jordan the Jordan the, the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the yeah, 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 no but yeah. sometimes there's whole portraits yeah, and like yeah, different yeah. things right, and right, it's right, like right. yo like you never even met this person mm-hmm. but just through his words he impacted you enough to immortalize him on your flesh like that is legendary you yeah, feel yeah. me like, yeah, and, he put and, a lot of work too if you think yeah. about it because in the short time that he was here not only did he did uh, not only did he did his music you know the uh, Capital Punishment and then he did Yeah Baby but he did a lot of collaborations when that first time I think he Capital broke Punishment, records the first year he did constantly yeah. the collaboration anybody was coming through he, anybody that reached him he did a collaboration with and then he did a lot of ghostwriting. Mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying so that was a lot of so just hella was, work putting in mm-hmm. and then you could tell clearly like and then there's people with talent and then star quality he had yeah. both. both you know what yeah, I mean yeah. like so he had that star because it's bigger than the, he was bigger than the music you know what I'm saying he was I still I, no I, pun I get, intended yeah yeah you know what I mean like, <laughs> no, pun intended, no pun intended pun intended yeah, yeah, come on, so that triple, yeah, nice. triple. Yeah, you dumb triple, night. Yeah, like, yeah, there's people yeah. who come up to me. He's like, yo, I remember when your dad came up to me. I was a little kid, and he pulled me to the side and dapped me up, and there was a hundred and or he handed out mad condoms and said that, like, you fucking with it, like, big punk. Like, just he he was in the hood touching people, leaving impacts, making stories, and everyone has crazy stories, but, like, it was bigger than the music. He was a star, and I think that that's what makes you a legend, too, because you have to have a level of impact. You know what I mean? And um, he, the world... When he walked in a room... It's like felt those points. Yeah, I'm the president. But, but, but president. more than yeah. more than that, that I feel like the world is obviously different if he didn't do what he did. Mm-hmm. That's you know what I mean? Like some people leave baby impacts and some people leave like and obviously it's the butterfly effect, you know, if I if I stepped on a roach, maybe there's a nuke that will go off. I don't know. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, but yeah. It, when you really look at somebody and you can really pinpoint like if that man didn't do what he did, so much would change. Let, that, me, let me ask you something. When you see these greatest List mm-hmm. and they got the list of fifty greatest. Yeah, rappers. Yeah, yeah. His name is never on it. So I lot, do look for it. A lot of times, a lot of times it's not. Sometimes do, it do is, but they be like, um, they be like in the bottom. It, it don't be like. It's not like a like a. A, a bother is a strange word. Like, bo- like it's not it's not something that's like eating at me. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? But it 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 perplexes me. It confuses me because a lot of these people that make these lists. Uh, they're knowledgeable enough to know who he is. Facts. You know what I'm saying? It's not like it's not like uh, you know a, a fucking my my 16 year old cousin's making a list. Yeah, and yeah, my yeah. father died three years before he was born, so his top five is Lil Yachty and like you know what I'm saying? Like it's yeah, not yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, like yeah, no, yeah. it's like these are people like well 40 and up. seasoned. 40 and up yeah, too. well yeah, seasoned. Yeah. And it's not and like did you forget? Like I don't know. So like it's confusing because it's like I could I could arguably put my father on that list and he could top a lot of people on there all all, all around there and Facts. granted it's by opinion but I feel like on a top 50 he yeah, should top 50, I mean, he yeah. argue, uh, arguably I know it's all based on opinions and stuff but if we're gonna argue he should be there you know what I mean so when he's not you know it begs various questions is it forgetful cause he's one of the out of Biggie Pac uh, him like the, the legends that pass he's one of the ones that get the least amount of plays he's on 37 you know, on T.I.'s list you know, you know what I'm saying yeah, th- yeah. yeah so he gets the least amount of plays he gets but the he's least on T.I.'s list yeah, yeah I think so salute to Ti. Yeah, to yeah, but you yeah. know what I'm saying. And he's on a few other lists. I'm sure. yeah. I, didn't, I didn't go and like check all yeah, the every lists. list. Like, let yeah, me see like, your no, list. When I'm not gonna find. I, I see a list. I do check. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah, yeah, honestly, yeah. I just didn't care. Like I, this is news to me that he yeah. wasn't on. I assumed that he yeah, would yeah, be on yeah, yeah, most yeah. lists if they knew what they were talking about. But I think it's that. Like, I, I, it doesn't eat at me. It is confusing, and I would like to if I could read everyone's mind at once and figure out why. Then sure, but yeah, I, I don't know. Um. Also, you know, March 9th hits. Mm-hmm. Biggie Day, everything mm-hmm. is biggied out. Yeah. Um, September seventh, um, I believe, uh, or the thirteenth. Tupac. Tupac. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's one of those days. Uh, mm-hmm. it's a Tupac. Mm-hmm. 
we don't know the day that your father passed. We don't even know his birthday. Yeah, the, who's responsible for us knowing that? Those those days, uh, they do play his. Those are the days where I hear his record. Well, his birthday's play. November tenth. Bir- no, okay, okay. November tenth. Okay, birthday. the world, the world, November the world. 10th. He was a Big Scorpio. Pun's birthday is November tenth. So let's let's. And his death day is February seventh of two thousand. February seventh. Okay. February seventh. So on those two days. There are uh, there is more plays pe- for people who do know, you know what I mean, and uh, people who do There's remember. There's a few people that support, yeah. but on my end, it's been hard for me throughout the years to do anything consistent yeah, because or anything great because things. I don't really have any the 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 resources or the support yeah. or the platform yeah. to do yeah. a, a such. You know what I'm saying, and yeah. I don't have the support. So, so then it's just the reason why I'm saying that. I'm just so shocked that the people who portray or claim to have loved him and messed with him, right. And it's not one person, it's people. I'm like, you know, when we think of dead in the middle, that everybody knows that. Yeah. Little kids are gonna try to say that. It's so it's thing. like so it's like, all right, we have Biggie, mm-hmm. greatness, we know March 9th. Yeah. Tupac, we know his birthday. Tupac doesn't ever go anywhere because mm-hmm. they make movies about them. But it's like when it comes to with pun, it's like What's you up? think you think maybe what I my my thought is maybe because it wasn't tragically violent. That I think violence, uh, because the other two died violently. Even Nipsey died violent. Violently, yeah. Um, even Easy E, they don't tribute Easy E a certain way. Yeah, because it was so called health. Um, mm-hmm. But your father's definitely it's actually an interesting perspective. Yeah. I never thought mm-hmm. about. But that. I think yeah. we attracted to violence. We attracted mm-hmm. to to the to the gang culture, violence. You know, right. murder, death, kill. Your father died from health complications. Health mm-hmm. Easy died from health complications. Right. Mm-hmm. And nobody talks about him because it, it, it it's like his, his death wasn't connected to something bigger than him. I will say that. Gotcha. You got me. I mean, it is because when you talk about really most deaths in America at this point, it's caused by weight related, heart related gotcha. issues. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? And that's something that is not cool to talk about when we talk about health. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I'm a vegan. I do my best to speak about. It. I'm not preachy about it. You telling me before this, you lost a hundred and change pounds. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. I think health is very important. But very. he died from health related issues. But you know, shout out to Styles P. He put a juice bar in the in, in the hood. You know, in yeah. Castle Hill. You know and what I'm saying? Like, and, and one in Brooklyn mm-hmm. and and one in Wyo. Uh, uh, there's a few of them, right? So he did that in a place that I felt was pivotal because all you got around there is chi- Chinese spots and pizza <laughs> yeah. crowd chicken, 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 chicken and chicken. stuff that kills you, you know, yeah. toxicity. But people don't want to have those sorts of conversations. It's way cooler, cooler with quotations to talk about someone getting shot than someone having a heart attack. And and, and sometimes that, that attachment to it could make more of a conversation. I don't know if that would transcend the 19 years that he's passed. Come on, you know we what don't I'm even like, got a float at the Puerto Rico you know, Day Parade? Certain, certain thing, I, I mm-hmm. I, I see it. I see it dissipating, and there's there's too many. Like I can't. I can't, Chris, yeah. hold on. The first Puerto Rican rapper, solo rapper, to go platinum. Yes. We don't even have a float at the Puerto Rican Day Parade. He nobody rep Puerto Rico like him. No, no, he was number one. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So what I'm saying, but even to, even still with that, that takes uh, that takes certain different tapes that you gotta go through and channels and certain yeah, things. Tapes, that, I'm not resources. talking about y'all. I'm talking about. They have oh. to see. Sometimes they have to pay homage. Yeah, yeah. No, you know what I'm no it absolutely. It has to come from the top. Sometimes there, there's not too many people with integrity that's doing something for the cause or the culture or because it makes sense. And it like no, it's 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 a lot of stuff that's and like puns and also nuts and puns. Death also not had to do a lot of his weight and health, but it has also to do with that was also tied into his mental health. I wanted to get into that yeah. too, and all, because this is the thing that I'm saying, right? We have. Puerto Ricans are very much involved in hip hop as blacks are. Yeah, we was right. there from the beginning. From the beginning, yeah. so we can't say it's a black man culture. No, mm-hmm. it was it was a poor man's culture. Yeah, from the Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens. It's the music of the people. The music of the mm-hmm. people. Yeah. And Puerto Ricans were better uh, graffiti writers, definitely. And um, we was out here break dancing. And we like to box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so um, just the respect that I that I believe Puerto Rican deserve mm-hmm. to have the first artist. That said, Puerto Rico. I'm Puerto Rican. Right. Besides, like Frankie Cutlass and, and different of people, mm. um, 
they need y'all need somebody to celebrate too. Yeah. Because we got Biggie, we got we, Easy E, we got we got. We all want these that champion. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And they, and and you see it when they champion certain people <laughs> from the culture. You got you know Cardi B. You got certain certain people that are Hispanic that represent that. Our people want to champion but it. I think you know the, what I mean? And and there's a lot of in people's hearts like when. But you I t- think the fans, the fans do the celebrate fans, him. The that's fans, what I'm saying. And like, I always for years in, always in the celebrate hearts. the fans. They always celebrate. They always do their thing. They always. I've never you know, seen listening. more diehard fans. More, than fans. It's, right. Yeah, it's more on the business side that is yeah. that on the show on the, the platforms. The love the, is there. Yeah. The people like and if and if and if he was celebrated more, there's a huge amount of people that's going to be very happy about it. You know yeah, that yeah, wants yeah. to that's see what it I'm because saying. they're mm-hmm. in the hearts. Uh, I'm not in the position, even in my own career, to if talk to the. the table, to, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm not yeah. in a position to talk to the people who who make these decisions gotcha. and and mm-hmm. who. Uh, and who Neither coordinate coordinate these moves and to do those things and I don't have uh, the platforms that some of these people have. Well, we using my you know, platform. We, we using it. Today. You know what I'm saying? Like, say to the powers that be, right. we definitely need a big pun float. Yeah, we need it. Um, we need we need uh, more recognition. A big pun, and with health being a big issue. Yeah, I, uh, with mental health mm, being a big I think issue. That's huge. With him being Puerto Rican man. Mm-hmm. Um. That's all important because we do have Puerto Rican children in America mm-hmm. right. that need hope, that need a, a champion, um, and, I, and, and, and also that want to do music. They don't have like, to do reggaeton music. You can, yeah, do you can do hip hop. You can do hip hop, and you can rap it. And you can truly be yourself. I think. Yeah. And I it's think, really not so much about hip hop because Pun also did boxing, but Pun was all about you know having a dream, and you know. Yeah, and that, that's a big part of it, and I and I think and a lot of people. Yeah, you got to yeah. be yourself, and I think the undertone of uh, there's so many people who walk around actively traumatized and don't even realize it. You feel me? Whether Facts. it be from abuse, whether it be from poverty, whether it be from the regular shit that we go through on a daily basis, looking just out your window, hood, just looking out the window. You yeah. know what I'm saying? There's a there's a there's a static state of existence that we go through that that perpetuates this anxiety that's so normalized that we don't even realize this weight is constantly on us and i think there's not enough people that talk about that and then you see this person who already passed that probably didn't realize it himself that he had these issues he was a kid. and he was a kid at the yeah. time and then his children get to grow up and his family gets and you see the effects on the world and the family and everything and we grow and we start understanding more and then we could dissect his actions and his understanding and say like yo he could represent this even after he went he's bigger even now now, that he has the potential to be bigger even now than he was. Like, where's the big pun movie? Right. That that's yeah. That's um, <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it's I put it out the universe, and you know, it's, it's got to be done right, man. Because first of all, what I've realized on the internet, just because you're fat and Hispanic doesn't mean you look <laughs> like my pun. pops. Yes, it doesn't mean you look like not every fat Spanish nigga yeah. is my dad. You know, who's the yeah. perfect person to play who. Your sister, <laughs> yeah, yo, on some real Your shit. Yeah, she was exactly. Exactly. yo. If they yeah, can make her look like a dude, one, right? yeah, yeah, star. Yeah. Shout out to Star. Yo, yeah. not, not, not only splitting image, but also her, her mannerisms, her yeah, charisma. She, she like, got she got all his star quality. All she that, like more yeah. like him than all than of anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah. she picked up. But a lot but of you his. but you need somebody that that has uh, uh, obviously need someone who is heavy, who is a span that looks like him. But the hardest part is is uh, captivating to to capture his essence. His essence. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the first thing people talk about when they do, tell me stories I love hearing stories about my pops it's his charisma his I remember character. when I first saw him um, Rap Pages had an event at Lehman College yeah mm, and he was came there. out and he came out with Fat Joe and we mm. didn't know his name mm. so me and my cousin just kept calling him yo fatter than Fat Joe that's fatter what we was calling him Joe. he was like yo it's this dude that's fatter than Fat Joe, but he's <laughs> yo. We was yo. We was I blown back was by him, and then he did Atlantic Annex too in Brooklyn. Okay, he, and we was just like, yo, dude is nice because he just he stole the show. Right, he yeah. stole the show. He had that presence. He, this is what I'm saying. I saw. I think he had on a he had on a white t shirt. Yeah. And like a do rag, like a, a it was the a do rag or stocking cap, stocking cap, stocking cap, roll up. Yeah, and I was just like. He's not super fly. He don't have on no jewelry, but you heard him rap like holy. You felt like that shit. I just, I just could not believe what I heard. Could have denied what was. I, I was just like, yo, yeah. dude is incredible, mm-hmm. but we did not know his name. Was, yeah. So we gave him a name, and then, um, his name was. Then we heard his name was Big, Big dog, Moon Dog. Pu- Big, moon, Big dog. moon Dog, and he's like Moon Dog. Then it was like Big, Big Dog Punisher. Big Moon Dog Punisher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we was like. Damn, it's getting that's there. a lot. It's, it's getting, getting there. there. It's getting there. Then we heard Big Punisher. Punisher. Very close. Then it was like Big, Big Pun. Pun. And there I was like... Is. His final form. I was like... 
<laughs> nah, I like Big Punisher better. You like Big Punisher? No, his well, name he is big, legally Big Punisher. His name is Big Punisher. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, legally his name is Big Punisher, Punisher but, but Big Punisher. People, easier. everybody yeah. calling Big Pun, yeah, yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. you know. It rolls off the tongue a little. And then so, I trademark both of them. And then Loud Records had a sampler. Yeah. With uh, Dead Prez, mm-hmm. um, and you ain't a killer on it. And when I heard it, I said, No, 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 no. This, I say, I called my cousin. I said, Yo. This fatter than Fat Joe, he got a song. <laughs> yo, fatter it's, than Fat Joe. It's happening. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And it was just <laughs> like, it was just like, yo, that was it. That was it. Then I heard Darling, Darling. Darlin but then, shout out to Minnesota, too. He did the yeah. beat. That's yeah. the homie. Um, When I heard it, I said, I know Darling Baby by the OJs. That's that's a different part of the So I'm looking through the record like, what you're part did to, he you're sample? Trying to see what it, he sampled a different version of the okay, song. Right. Oh. He used the vocals. They actually was even in the video. Yeah, they were in the video. But he used a different version that somebody remade the the, 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 the song. Crazy. So I was like, yo. Then Quiet is Kept. Shout out to Maddie C. Maddie C lived on um, Fort Greene Place in Brooklyn. He was the A&R for Loud mm-hmm. Records. Mm-hmm. He had some of your father vocals. Oh. He gave me the tempo, and I did a remix for one of your father records. I do not even remember what it was on the SB1200, right? Mm. And Maddie C shit. So Maddie C, wherever you at, F- let F- everybody hear F- that record. Yes, you know what Maddie saying? C. Because yeah, I, I did it. <laughs> yeah. um, as far as as far as his catalog, is it anything out there that we did and we hear everything? That's like one of the most common. Yeah, we asked don't. Questions. I mean, I, I, I don't. I don't have physically any uh, reels music of his. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, it'll be very rare to find because that's a commonly asked question, and there's been moments where we even searched. And I think if someone does have something, it's, it's, like, it's like it's like a it's like a different it. take or an old session, maybe messed up and did something different. Nothing that's super official. I've heard rumors someone having a verse or two, but and and no one's letting it go. Super rare, and if it is. Then they ain't letting it. I don't know what they're waiting for. It gotta be. You, you know why? Because you know, when you record, you say, Nah, I ain't feeling Not that, that one. I use yeah, that. that's just it. Might be stuff it like gotta that. Be records. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah like because I've even but heard. But he wasn't, Pun was not the one to be recording constantly. Because so you gotta she understand, would know. Yeah. I would know. Because yeah. he will go in, he'll make his, he'll, whether he was doing something collaborative, he'll go in, do the studio, and do it. If it was for his music, same thing. He wasn't doing the Tupac that was like recording in days and days out. No, like, all you the remember, songs that he did came out. But yeah, I think you gotta I, remember I think Pun's, Pun's, he had a lot of health issues. So he wasn't trying to be in the studio longer the than what he but, had to But what I'm saying is that we do have songs that was recorded. Right, and we just didn't use them. Right, it, it might be a song that he. I mean, yeah, yeah kind yeah, of because he, he he will be there punching in and yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. So there might be a and, few little. And yeah, there's like there's those, and there's also like he might just have like fucked around one time and freestyled a verse, just playing around while he's being like twelve balls, and someone has that session where but you know the clips. Nothing but nothing for me yeah. to put out like yeah. something. You know what made me like him too when he spoke, and they asked him who was his biggest influence. He said Cool G Rap, yeah. and I was like. Yo, he paid homage. Mm-hmm. And that was so instrumental in hip hop to me, period. Yeah, his he, fa- said, yo, he said, yo, he said, yo, I rhyme like G Rap. <clears throat> yeah. And I was like, his yeah, favorites was Daddy King, G Rap, and Rakam. Those are <laughs> three. Hey, that's a solid. That's a, that's a start. A I, I take that start. That's a big I take three. that three. That was, that was the first three people introduced me in '87. Because you remember, I told you I was in Pentecostal church. Yeah, yeah, So yeah, he was yeah. the one that introduced me to hip hop and music, and he's like, "These are my three favorites." When when did you when did when did you realize uh, you had a famous father? Uh, at his funeral, um, when uh, I was six years old, he got buried in Castle Hill Ortiz funeral. Uh, it was like a three day wake. Was it like a three day wake? Yeah. And uh, we were there, and um, there was thousands, Multitude thousands of people. of people outside. Wow. And then I go inside the funeral, and most of the people there, we we don't know them. They're not fam. These are fans that are coming in, and I realized. I realized that when uh, some dude came in, and I remember it vividly, he he went, he walked really quickly up to the casket, and he dropped to his knees, and he ripped his shirt off his back and just started wailing. And this person never met my dad before, mm. and it made me, as a six year old, as a six years old, I was still uh, trying to fathom the concept of death. But at that point, I was able to understand, like, wow, like who, what did my dad do to yeah, yeah, to, to, this grown, yeah, to gauge mm-hmm. this reaction yeah, yeah. from a stranger? You know what I mean? And then um, as I got a little a little bit older and older, I started to fathom it more and more. And I think around the age of uh, twelve, where I was already because after a while, I started, like for a few years, I didn't listen to his music just because I didn't fully understand it, and and I was hard. And then when I re-listened to it, was a verse. Uh, it was called Rhyme for Rhyme, Cormega and my dad. 
mad. It was mm. uh, it was adverse, and I actually shed a tear just hearing because I finally understood everything he was saying, all the entendre, and I realized how great he was. He's fucking in incredible. that moment, you know what I'm saying? Like in that incredible. moment, I always knew he was, but in that moment, I realized how great he was. And then going back and remembering that dude ripping off his shirt, it made me realize like this is the impact that he, the level of greatness impacted me through his music. That strangers got to feel this way too. It was the same and for it was, me too. It was crazy. Not knowing, yeah. I didn't know how big he was until it was a funeral. Wow. Because even though I went on tour with him and I was there every step and every interview and and and, and music videos, I and you're like when like when you're in it living and this is my husband you see every day. I, I'm not understanding or know what the world or how the world sees him. You know yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah, focused yeah. on my Especially back him. then where you're not seeing yeah, all and the footage like, yeah, and the numbers and media. you see 10 million views. Yeah, social and you media do, yeah, wasn't like, like that. He didn't have Instagram. We didn't have Facebook. You know, yeah. it wasn't nothing we didn't even have MySpace. You only, see, exactly. what you, you only so, see what you see with your eyes. So yeah, when you know the I mean? funeral came and there was people driving from all over the United States, from L.A., driving and kids. And it, was like, was it was like a parade. Like that, it looked like a moving parade. Like that many people was there. It was crazy. Yeah, and that that I think that opened our eyes. Yeah. Um, Right now... um. If if the people that are supposed to be his friends, do you have any contact with any of them? Um, there's no one that I have consistent contact with. I've had casual contact with what Cuban, um, mm -hmm. maybe say, but it's not like. I mean, I try to tell this to people often when you think about it logically. Like I'm, I was six when he died. Got you. My father's friends aren't going to keep extensive contact with a six year old. That's how I. That's how I. You ain't six now. That, yeah, I'm not six now. And there's some, <laughs> and there's some people reach out, but it's weird because after this amount of time, it's if you're good. reaching, if you're reaching now, it's more. It's not. It's not a. It's not, even if it is a hey how you doing there's there's gonna and not even to any fault of their own I'm not saying it's malicious animosity but there's gonna be an undertone of like hey can we do such and such or can we do this or can we make a record or so you're not this, interested in doing any records with, any with anybody that, nah not at all because um, I, I had to fight for years just to just, just just so that when I go somewhere and I don't I'm not saying this for this interview but uh -huh. like um, when I go I, I like I gauge my success sometimes based on how many questions about my father they ask me when Facts. I go somewhere Facts. you know what I'm saying like how much of this interview is going to be about me you, or you know your what I'm saying yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and I and because uh, I've been doing music for over a decade Facts. and I've established myself and if you're still just talking about my father when you see me then I haven't you know and I feel like doing records with people that he's done right to, to even build even more into that hole of being somebody's Pigeon son hole. yeah facts. you know what i'm yeah, saying yeah, like yeah. as somebody like i'm not just some like we're all somebody's child you know what i'm saying but that's but not i, I got that, john that's, yeah that's yeah. not yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, not yeah, the yeah, extent yeah. of my greatness and i've established that so to do things like that it's it, i think it's just kind of pandering to that perspective that i'm trying to eradicate you and, feel that, me? and that and that's where i was going with it i wanted to know how hard has it been because that's why i brought him up in the beginning to mm -hmm. bring it out how hard has it been to get out of the shadow of a legend it's outrageous like it really is outrageous because um there, there's moments it's not even i wouldn't even mind it like the comparisons if mm -hmm. it wasn't um if it wasn't degradating or detrimental to my career in the context like if i made a regular if i wrote a verse and spat it to you and it's a fire verse mm -hmm. if i was a regular person and i came to you and you had zero expectations of me it would be a fire verse, but it may not be the best. It may not be better than the best thing you've ever heard from my father. Therefore, mm. you're disappointed. Or you might hear me make a record. Like I came out with a song. I uh, came out with a video today. It's called In the Morning. That's one of the first sing I'm singing on it, doing different stuff. It's a dope record. It's poetic. It's beautiful. But it's like, oh, well, he's not rapping about killing niggas and, and yeah, holding yeah, it down yeah, for yeah, yeah. Like it's it's this like you you uh, they want me to be this thing. And, and that's difficult. And just getting out of that and being established in my own because even it goes deeper into like just my own I think it's bigger to me than to anybody else obviously because I'm going through it but also growing up as a child of of abuse and of seeing certain things like I, I for a lot of my life I tried my hardest to not be my father gotcha. yeah, on a fundamental level you know what I'm gotcha. saying like the way gotcha. he, the way he treated my mom the way he treated us the way he treated my I'm like alright I'm gonna be a better father I'm gonna be a better husband I'm gonna be a better person I'm gonna do all these things so then when I start doing the thing that I love and all I get is that you're this you're this you're this it was not only holding me back career wise but it was staggering me as a, as a human because you jumped in and out, some, you had jumped in and out of the music game sometimes. Yeah, you sometimes know, I, you just like yeah, I, don't, I started. I, don't do I started this. when I was eight years old in a group called Three Down. Uh -huh. uh, it was Benzino's son yes. and Lil James, and we and ironically, like at that point, like that was the most successful I've probably been in music. Like because wow. we had like a one point two million dollar deal on the table. And 
what was your name at like the time? My baby pun. Baby pun. Baby pun. Baby but we also had an engine behind me. Like I, we had the label. What was gotcha. it? Interscope. Uh, Interscope. We signed the Interscope, and uh, we had like a one point two on the table. And I can't wait till I meet Eminem because the beef with uh, Eminem is one of my favorite rappers. Uh-huh. And the beef between him and Benzino at that time. I don't That's know if you what, remember. That, 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 uh, that Benzino and and Eminem had beef at the time, and because we were children, it was a causality, whatever the fuck, in the contract uh-huh. that we could, we had to, the deal was dropped with us because of the because of the beef and the prolonged problems. So that he's the reason why. The, but I'm grateful because and, and, and they, they never they never released a, the group. Yeah, name. the so group. Three yeah, can never go out anywhere yeah, because they like wow. yeah. They already gave so down payment. I did, they already signed. I did the that for a bit, uh, and I'm grateful that I got to grow up in poverty because I think it gave me way more character than if I would had money back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And then on top, uh, so after that, I was just more so poetically inclined. Still wrote as a hobby. Did things here and there. Uh, people. So would, it was like in junior high school when he was going to junior high school. He was just went to video games. He wasn't even writing. They wanted to do anything. So I was like, you know what? I had a lot of people asking about him and wanting. And I said, you know, let you know, let's back off from this. And be a let child. Let you be a kid. And, you, I, and I'll be and rapping in the lunchroom. Like here. it's a hobby, though. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I said the name is always there. <clears throat> if you ever want to do it again, you pick it up one day. And yeah, then, yeah. Uh, and then it was right after uh, high, high school. school. Uh, I've always been poetic. He was dabbling a little bit. Yeah, but right uh, that, during <clears> high school too, like when I was 14, 15, I would still put stuff out and do things. But it was like I decided I'm like, let me finish high school, get get my uh, get my d- diploma and shit, and then I'm going to. Uh, um, really think about what I want to do with my life, and I mm-hmm. saw a lot of my friends going to college, which is nothing wrong with college, and a lot of friends going to get nine to fives. At least you but went I, to high school, but, but, I did. yeah, but uh, yeah, a, a lot of I saw a lot of my friends doing that because they thought they were miserable, and they thought that there was just something they're supposed to do because yeah, that's yep. the social norm. I'm like, damn, I don't want to follow the system and then be miserable. Like, what do I love? Uh-huh. And though I didn't have a clear answer, the clearest one was music, mm-hmm. so I went for it. And since then, it's been eight years, and that's since then I've been going nonstop. Got you, know? you got yeah. you. So, so musically, um. Shout out to Styles P. I Big al- time. I always wonder mm-hmm. why he gravitated towards you. He's one of the realest people I've ever no, met. Not in my no, life. well. I'm not. Yeah. Well, well, because yeah, you're nice. Is. He gravitated towards you. But again, I would think that forget who your father is. Right. You're from New York City. Yeah. From the Bronx. Mm-hmm. You got the skill. You got the talent. You got the drive. You got the ambition. I always felt like more people should have been like, "Oh, nah, come over here. You could rap." Yeah. Why is it not like that in New York? I I think New York City specifically is one of the hardest places because it's so fast paced and everyone here, even people, the most ambitious people from other places come here. It's kind of like the pick of the the litter. So everyone here is trying to be successful, but only 1% of the people that want to be successful realize that the other, someone else being successful doesn't take away from their success. Mm. Like the more successful you get doesn't mean I'm less successful. It doesn't hurt me. If anything, if I know you and you're more successful, then my group just got empowered. But people don't think like that it's yeah. more dog eat dog mm-hmm. yeah so my, it's like, my, my light ain't gonna dim yours yeah but that's mm-hmm. what they feel so it's like i've even even as an artist growing I, I felt it and even at shows you can see it in the body it's like yo if you're not me or my mans and sometimes fuck not even my man then fuck you b yeah. and it, there's no unity you know what i'm saying like here you go to other places like i've gotten there's not one other whether it's a city or state or even outside the country <laughs> where i went to <coughs> europe and i told you there's not one other place that i went that i did not get more love than in new york and i get get love here but it's like yo like they and then plus it's the too cool shit like some people just don't want to yeah, show ain't no they, 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 they think yeah, they, they want to say I'm not yeah, no dick rider yeah yeah, yeah. it's like, it's like yo rider. like it's like, yeah if, if you show love you're a dick rider and if you have constructive criticism you're a hater, hater yeah. so like you know what I'm saying so it's, it's weird like and, and I think that it's just like it's just a norm here and that's why when they say like if you can make it you can make it anywhere and it's because a lot of people <laughs> just don't yeah, they just want they think about themselves and yeah. and in a very surface way not realizing that if you thought about us then you yourself could rise you what know? keeps but, you going um i think the refusal to accept my current reality i think that's really what it is i'm, I'm i have a we talked about it a little bit beforehand but mm-hmm. i'm not um i'm not satisfied with the world that's been presented to me yet i feel like i was dealt a hand of cards and given this backstory that i was uh that that was given to me for the sake of overcoming it you know what i mean mm-hmm. i think my i think my story is going to be one of triumph and of one of uh of, of overcoming these obstacles <laughs> with the disadvantages that so many people have between mental stuff physical stuff between the upbringing poverty racial shit everything combined and i could still get this far so i i don't want to i don't want to abandon that story i think i always think about the end like when i'm sitting on my deathbed i look back on my life i want to say like yo i did that yeah you know what i'm saying i don't want to be that person that has regrets so i think that's what keeps me going even through like the misery because 
and even at times where I feel like quitting, there, there's so much. That's why. That's why when I get on platforms like this, I talk mm-hmm. about stuff like this because yeah. I go on the internet and search for people who say things like this, yes. who are yes. successful, because it makes me feel like, yo, like though I'm feeling this deep, deep <laughs> turmoil and and incredible self doubt because of years of being just put down. This person went through that too, and they still made it and believed in themselves. You, you know, know that I mean? the average individual will not believe or can't fathom what you've been through. Yes. Because they think, well, you're a son of a legend. You had a wonderful life. I oh, don't know. I don't think they understand what you've been through. Like, your life might have been worse than some of the people who think you should have had this I, wonderful life. I don't know much people, and I'm not saying it out of pity or anything like that. Like, I, I, it's not, I've never asked for pity. Like, But I, out of all my... I've been the brokest out of all my friends. I was the only homeless one out of all my friends. I was the one that and massive misconceptions. People used to walk and it sucks when you're when you're poor and you have nothing and people think that you have it all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah, even yeah, what like yeah, I'd yeah, rather yeah. you just think I was poor, bro. Like you uh-huh. know what I mean? Like cause that misconception and then on top of that you gotta understand like people don't treat celebrities like humans Mm -hmm. like natural human interactions don't um uh apply like you know if you if you um, i'm not even gonna say you but if someone had a parent that just passed Mm -hmm. it's it you wouldn't normally go up to them and bombard them with questions about their dead parent yeah yeah yeah, you know what i'm saying like we we weren't allowed to mourn his loss because of just the still living it yeah it's it's like like he almost never died yeah yeah and it's the constant he's not here and it's weird and then people wanting to fight or people coming up me thinking i'm asshole or people and then i had to learn when I was six years old, five years old, the difference between real and fake friends, people who wanted to be around me just because of who my dad was as a five year old. You know what I mean? Damn. And then and then on and then on t- and then just between all that and then figuring out and then just this just cons- this perspective of you that's so different than what you actually feel on the inside and navigating through that throughout the world. It's 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 weird why you're also dealing with all the things that poor people go through and minorities go through. And you know, so it's it's been difficult, you know, and then so basically while he was alive, my my perspective of life while he was alive and I'm uh, I don't mean to say that it wasn't I do have good memories but most of the memories that I have are of abuse or of craziness or just things that I was trying to fathom as a child but it didn't feel good and then right after that it was weird bittersweet he died so now we had this dude that was doing all this crazy shit to us he died though and now it's like all right um but where's my dad? Like he was also my father, and then after that he was the breadwinner as well. So now it's like, all right, so this is gone, but now we're now we're, now it's replaced by poverty. You know what I'm saying? So dealing with that, and then growing up, and then trying to pursue this, and then yeah, it, it's it's been it's been ridiculous, and then having depression and navigating that, being a kid, and it, it's it's a lot. And I think everyone goes through this, and I think that people think that when you're the child of a celebrity or when you uh, are the child of a legend, and people are just ignorant of how music game works, people think that I could just hit up like. <laughs> anybody right now and get a collab. He was like, yo, just collab with J. Cole. I'm like, yo, bro, not only do I not have the hundreds of thousands of dollars so for, a feature, yeah, yeah. for a feature, I also don't have the notoriety or the, the to hit him up that it makes sense business-wise for him to do a feature with me. Like, Where, but, where you're using your name and not using, your father's name. Yeah, well, or yeah. even if I was, because it's one of those things, it's like, you, you know, I'm not ignorant to business. You know, a yeah, lot yeah, of people yeah, are yeah. ignorant to the business side of it. People see what you put out, not what you put You don't in. have a self-entitlement. I, I don't have self-entitlement. Okay, I, yeah. I have zero self and, that, and growing up poor humbled you to say, I really have to get I really it from ain't the mud. shit. I yeah. ain't shit. Yeah. Like I had a moment, like I had my lowest moment in uh because I had I had I still to this day have depression, but I, I've had I, I had a really, really low moments when I was in high school. I remember I was fifteen years old, the girl I was with was cheating on me, I was in a shelter, I was homeless, I felt really fat and out of shape, and my boy's telling me, like, yo, just come to the public pool. I'm like, ah, I don't really want to go, I feel crazy. He's like, nah, nah, just come. So I went and they on the whole other side. I remember vividly, I got out the pool, I'm walking, and there's a group of like some three hot chicks walking towards me, and as they walk by they all just break down pointing at me and start laughing and it's already I'm feeling the lowest point in my life and that just hit me to like a complete rock bottom of self esteem 15 like, yeah I was 15 years old I'm homeless yeah, I'm, I'm, you, like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm homeless I've been broke my whole life I'm fat I have no self worth I talk I talk down on myself to make myself believe that the things that are happening to me make sense like I tell myself like yo bro look at myself in the mirror and give myself anti affirmations just to cope with life like yo you ain't shit you're worth nothing and that's why you, this is why your life is like this just to cope and then I got to that point after I hit that rock bottom I started realizing 
the 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 reasons I feel lowly about myself is because of everyone else's opinions of me, and it's not reflecting what I should feel towards me. So at that point, that's when I started focusing more on how can I change my self view? How could I negate what everybody else? How can else I look in the mirror and, and, and not love that say person? You're a piece of shit. Yeah, and love that person. Yeah, I started yeah, giving yeah. myself affirmations. I started working out. I started reading more, empowering myself, surrounding myself with people who was on that same state of mind. I started eating better. I started doing the things you do to climb out of this hole. You know what I'm saying? But it's an everyday choice a choice you got to make constantly every moment not once a day but multiple times a day to say i'm gonna decide to be happy you know did you mean? know he was going through this um certain things i mean uh -huh. it's, i mean i knew my kids were going through all of it being a, a parent uh being a mom without you was going to, through yeah being a mom without being able to supply a house and 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 and, and, <laughs> and not be able to supply as a parent should a lot of resource for them it was extremely hard for me and knowing that they were going through that and being homeless so yeah, I knew there was certain there was a lot of stuff that he was going through. Uh, we then he doesn't talk a lot about things because it's not uh, Chris will not talk about certain things or you can ask him he'll shut down. So it's to like, this day, to this day is is the way or it I comes work out in the raps. With, 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 yeah, I, I, I listen to a lot of his music to I'm, know yeah. who he I'm, is. I'm, yeah, 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 you yeah. Learned, so yeah. Honestly, yeah. I'm, a, I'm more of a. Um, <laughs> I'm the person everyone goes to for advice. Yeah, I go I don't, to him for I don't, advice. I don't, I don't, I don't ask for advice. I'm the person everyone goes to. Who's the psychiatrist? Psychiatrist. Yeah, I always ask that. Yeah, yeah. Who who looks after the strong people? Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's it's so like even though yeah, so I go for him for yeah. advice. Yeah. So it's it's yeah, it's one of those things. And I, I'm I'm a big uh, I have this sense of um, it makes it harder for myself. I think I gotta do everything by myself. You're the healer. Yeah, and I gotta heal myself. If these yeah, wounds yeah. if these wounds are self inflicted, I should be able to heal myself. <laughs> you, you sound I mean? like um. Damn, you sound like me. But everything that he was going through, <laughs> we was we were all going through it. Yeah. But all, you know what though? Us. Even 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 for myself, you know? um, I was the youngest. You know, my mother died when I was two years old, and I was the youngest. And uh -huh. it's like now I'm the older younger brother. Right. I talk to my older brothers and sisters, and they come to me and say, "What do you think about this?" And I be like this, and a lot of stuff that I've been through, I I suffered from um depression. I think. Depression never goes away. Depression no. is you learn um, how to cope. Yeah, you know how to cope with it, and you're not. Some days are better than others. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I also did a podcast before telling people don't fall into the cycle of anxiety and depression. That's right. If you're having a bad day, you're not depressed. You're having a, a bad, bad day. day. Exactly. Depression is when you really think about killing yourself. It, I think it's a state of hopelessness. Yeah, yeah. Where it's you where you just say, you know what. I'm done. I'm done. I'd yeah. rather just be dead. And the, and every, or right. I'm gonna kill somebody else. Right. And uh, you, you, it don't have to always end up because I've been depressed for years, and I don't really think about I'm gonna kill myself because at the end of the day, the only thing that really keeps me alive because I have three kids. Now, All right, but that three but kids, I probably would have killed exactly. Myself. But you that that's what kept you going. Yeah, you, you, you think about you think about a 15 year old. He don't have no I kids. Can't, I can't leave. How, them. how do you how do you break up with yourself? You know Facts. what I'm saying? Like and you know, because like if if I'm miserable in a relationship. I could leave that relationship. But you was fifteen. But you're though. but you're miserable with with you. Yeah, I'm fifteen. But I always you thought already went through I, I already went through a lot. I mean, and even and even at like even at a young age, like you gotta understand, like I was paying bills when I was eight years old. I was making sure we had stuff. Like my father, when I was a small child, I remember vividly him telling me, like, when I die, it's your responsibility as the only boy to take care this of your family. This was this was something very powerful that he instilled on me into me on a constant basis. So after he passed, I was six years old, but I had this responsibility that I. I needed at to six, take care of my yeah. family. And at eight years old, I was paying bills. I was making sure that we, we had it. After that fell through, I, I from the age of eight, even to this day, I have this immense guilt that my family went through what we went through. That as the only boy, I because was Because you couldn't provide. Yeah, I couldn't oh, provide right. and I couldn't protect them. You yeah, get what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, like yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen my mother shed tears for years off of shit that people did. Like shit that if, if, if I didn't have to think logically to know that I needed to make strategic moves in order to assure that in the future that we're okay, I would have killed niggas already. Yeah, gotcha, you get what I mean? Gotcha, like, gotcha. So it's, it's, it's like that level of frustration and, and, and responsibility that I put on myself for years just weighing down and realizing the powerlessness. And that powerlessness trickles back to being a kid of child abuse where this same person telling me that you need to protect them is the same person abusing them. Got so you, I felt you. powerless. Then after he, uh, while he was alive, after he died, I felt powerless. And then my life kept 
reinforcing the powerlessness that I was unable to change it because I didn't have the resources yet. I'm 25 now and I'm just now acquiring. Yeah, right. And I'm just now I'm just now acquiring the mental state and the tools that I need in order to finally feel like, you know what? I, I understand enough now to know that I'm getting to a point where I could really be the person that I was supposed to be. You know, it's funny. Um, I I would like to, after this interview, stay in more contact with you I would because love um, what you're going through, I went through too. Um, in so many different ways. My, my the difference was my father was a crackhead. Mm. He started smoking crack when crack first hit. Right. That shit is rough. Yeah. Because uh, it's, it's, it's nobody's trauma greater. Because I hate when people do no, that. No, it's not a You contest. don't know what I went through. Yeah, people it's not do a, that yo, shit Yo, they was like, oh, I'm yeah. more sad than yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, like, exactly. Like, bro. Yeah, like, it's cool. You never cut yourself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah I yeah. didn't. But, yeah. um, but um, how I overcome and overcame depression, because I've been low. I've been so low that I looked out the window and said, yo, I'm jumping. Mm. I'm going to jump out this window. But then I had enough sense to say, well, if I jump out the window and don't die, that shit going to hurt. Suck, bro. You so then I, said, <laughs> then I said, nah, I don't do wait. that. But then I, but then I felt like I really, at one, one point in my life, I felt like I was suffering. Mm-hmm. Like I just felt like, yo, man, why? What happened to yeah. me? Why is turmoil, my life like this? Turmoil, yeah. I was doing the music thing. Mm-hmm. Certain things happened with the music. I was in a relationship that I seen deteriorating because of my mental health. Yes. It's not that the person didn't that, care about that me. That sucks too. It's that yeah. I didn't have the mental capacity to Cater give to them relationship. Yeah. To, to help. Mm-hmm. And it ended. You couldn't even help yourself. How are you supposed to yep. give someone else what you so can't give So when the relationship yeah. ended, believe it or not, that was a form of relief. It was. Because I was like, well, the inevitable happened. Mm-hmm. So now what do you do? You're um, forced to face it. You're yeah. forced to face it. And... um. I think to a certain extent, I went through things. I was extremely violent, mm-hmm. very hostile, um, mm-hmm. just not nice to people because, right. f- yo, if I'm suffering, fuck everybody. Right. And, and and I never was, a, the, you know, I never felt like nobody's child. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. My father, my mother died when I was two. Um, my father was a crackhead, so everything felt like a charity case. Yeah. Oh, you bought me some clothes? Thank so you. Was but you, who was raising you? My my grandmothers, my aunts. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And then who I, you could, yeah, who I you bounced could. from crib. But mm. still, you know, my cousins got their mother. This one got the. I don't have anything. So mm. everything that I got always felt like charity. You pity charity. Yeah, yeah, you pitying me. Yeah. So for a long time, I didn't like to be hugged. Yeah. Because I was my mother's baby. So It's crazy hearing so, all this. So when people yeah. would come to me and say, oh, I always felt like, yo, you hugging me because you feel sorry for me. So don't hug me. So right. even when I was grew up, women would be like, "Huh, you see, even today when you try to hug me, I was like, yeah. I don't, I just don't I'm hug. Bit, yeah. I don't like that shit. Yeah, I don't like, be, I don't like, be, I'm not yeah, used to being comforted. Yeah, that's I don't what, like yeah, to be comforted. Yeah, I feel like, why are you comforting? Yeah, I'm like, not yeah, pussy. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, you know like, like I could comfort myself. Thank so, you. Yeah. so some of the things that you're going through and went through parallels. That's what I said. You yeah. sound just like me. Yeah. How I overcame it one day, I was. I didn't know at the particular time. I was 298 pounds. Mm. I got up and I looked in the mirror. And um, they say the eyes is the window to the soul. Yes. I, I, I didn't wear, I wouldn't have on shades. I went and I looked in the mirror. And I said to myself, who the fuck is this? And I said it out loud. And when I said that, I looked at myself. And I said, I don't even know who I am. I have no idea who I am. I know who everybody think I am. I know who I think I am. But I don't know who I am. Who are you? And it was a scale there. And I stepped on the scale and it said 298 pounds. And I said, 200? What the fuck? I said, 298? When? How are you 298? <laughs> I was expecting to see, yeah. like, I would say, yo, you're 240, 250. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 260. But, but 300 pounds? But 300 pounds. That's, that's a different. I had my homegirl Leah shit gave me four boxes. I still owe $20 too. She gave me four <laughs> boxes of Girl Scout cookies. And I had my, my, my guilty pleasures ice cream. Mm. And I had a pint of Hagen dazs in the freezer. I ate all the cookies and I ate the um, the, Hagen the, Hagen Dazs. Dazs. the Ben and Jerry's. It was Ben, ben and Jerry's. Jerry's. Oh, Ben and Jerry's. And you know what I said? Last time. That's it. That's it. That's it. So what I did was I started taking baby steps. I started walking. I started walking up the stairs. I started walking. I went and bought a bike. Now, this is the thing with mental health and physical health. In the hood, people clown you 
for trying to do the right thing. Yeah. You know yeah. what they were saying to me? On the bike, they fuck you doing you. on a bike. Mm-hmm. Fuck you doing it. Yeah, they clown, hey, they clown you fucking, for bettering yourself. Hey, it's hard. Yo, this nigga got on a this nigga got on a scarf. It's 30 degrees. Like he trying to sweat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, yo, this nigga got on a North Face. Fuck you eating vegetables, nigga. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. That's that's how serious? That's how we think. So um Long story short, uh, this started in 2000, the end of 2015, 2016. Right. And I just went on a journey. And it was a journey of self. I'm, I, I'm my mother's child, but I'm me. And I just think of way, 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 W-A-Y, W-A-Y, W-A-Y. You know what that means? What? Worry about yourself. Mm. Worry about yourself. Worry about yourself. Then you could worry about yours. But for now, worry about yourself. Because I was the strongest nigga in the crew. Everybody came to my crib. Everybody party with me. And then one day I woke up, I was by myself. And I did not know, yo, where is everybody? Who do I go to? Because I stopped drinking. To? Yeah. I stopped drinking. So the party wasn't Stop. going on no more. Right. I wasn't doing the music, so there was no party. So I was by myself. Yeah. So I realized I was fucking depressed. That's why I was drinking so much. So I tried to quit drinking. I got more depressed. I'm in a bad relationship. Chick put me out. I'm sleeping on my sister's couch. I'm like, yo, I'm this nigga with all this talent. I own this big website. I ain't shit. And, you, yeah. and I'm 300 fucking pounds. How do I overcome this shit? And then I'm telling you, one day you just have an epiphany of, yo, fuck this. I don't want to live like this no more. Yeah. How do I start? Yeah. And I just put together a plan. So now I try to tell people, people think I'm an asshole or people on the internet sale types of shit. They don't know my journey. My journey is crazy mm. because losing weight is easy. Keeping it all Keep it, that's the hard is the part. hardest part. That's the hardest because part. Because you, and then that's when your discipline kicks in. Yes. And you say to yourself, yo, I can't eat two slices of pizza. Mm-hmm. I'll eat one. And drink hella water. And that one <laughs> slice is just going to, Cure the urge of the craving. Mm-hmm. Or you know what? Fuck that pizza. I've been eating pizza for so long. Look what it did to me. Yeah. You bastard. Fuck pizza. Yeah, fuck <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so 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 then you start finding outlets. And I yeah. realize you do interviews, but you also have insight. You know how to talk. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like this is my rap. Yeah. So you you're know how you write? Yeah. You know how you write and you say, I'm gonna get this thoughts off. The cr- yeah. I'm gonna put it to the masses. This is how this, this is, is how you this do is it. my forum. Yes, you know what I'm saying. And, you and found it, your purpose. Yeah, and then you start building. You start yeah. building. And of course, we could. I could be an asshole sometimes to say things that piss people off. Yeah. But then you start feeling like, okay, this is my release. This is my release. I talk. Your release is rap. You know what I'm saying. So don't ever give up on that. The music business is what it is. Yeah, it's gonna exist. It existed before us. It's how, it's how to crack and the code. It exists during us. Yeah, it's gonna exist after, after us. us. Yeah. But one thing you said earlier that's very, very instrumental, the code is already cracked. Mm-hmm. It's just that we got all the pieces. Yeah. We just don't know how to put them put together. Them together yeah. So you got this platform. We got other platforms. It's about, yo, today we need you. Tomorrow we need you. Tomorrow we need you. Let's go around and, and everybody band together. I ain't talking about some kumbaya shit. We're mm. not always going to get along. But for the greater good of hip-hop culture, right. it's certain shit we have to do with one another that yeah. we refuse to do, and then we wonder why it's fucked up. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm We're saying? perpetuating so, the problem. So when I seen you and Styles P doing so much music, I was like, damn, I would have thought it would have been other people doing music with him. So that made me respect Styles. I was like... He's, he's one of the few... There's a few others, but him and uh, the whole D-Block Collective really did one of the mm-hmm. few that genuinely showed love for so various reasons. Was. Not only did they fuck with my pops, but they, they met me, they fucked with me as a human and as an artist as well. And they gave me a lot of insight to, yeah, to the yeah. game and the how game, to... Yeah. It's the stuff that you're, you're telling me, you uh-huh. know what I'm saying? Like the, like levels of like gems, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, I appreciate it to this day. Yeah. And, and that, to me, resonates realness. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I've rarely met a person that treated me nicely when they didn't see how they could benefit from me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I've rarely met that. If even they can't even, use you, yeah, you're even, useless. Even a phone call. I yeah. haven't... I hate the phone. I hate the phone. And I, I and like... I, I tr- tragically hate the phone. Like, yeah, I have... Yeah. Like, some of the relationships I have in my, in, in my life are, like, hindered because I don't answer my phone. But I've rarely ever answered this when it wasn't someone asking me for something. Whether it be peace of mind or financial things or, or something. But, like, you want to take from my life Welcome all the time. My like, world. You know what I mean, and I'm okay with, and I'm okay because I'm a giver. You know what I mean, but sometimes it's there's emptiness. You know what I mean, and I have nothing to give. You know, yeah, and, yeah, um, yeah. Because you give, it, it's like um, you gotta let your people take your over. soul. Yeah, like, yeah. like, 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 yo, I, I remember. I'm not gonna name the rapper, but I remember telling the rapper, you email me. Li- I mean, you text me links. 
Yo, I was in the crib. I was um sick as hell. And I I was by myself. And I'm like, I'm in here fucked up. And then you text me, yo, I've been texting you. You not responding. I'm like, you never ever once asked me how I was doing. Yeah. I'm not a fucking robot. You I'm not here for you. Me. Yeah. I'm here for me. And that's when the way thing, way, yeah. worry about yourself. So. Now, people call me selfish. I'm an asshole. All I care about is me and all that. But I, I gave y'all so much of me and right. y'all tore me apart yeah Mm -hmm. to where i had to rebuild i literally had to Mm -hmm. rebuild my mind my body and my soul Mm. because y'all took everything from me you know so now when people be like i be like nah i ain't doing that shit there's no uh, there's no way around uh like just asking you like the step by step like what what type of and not you gotta get super detailed obviously i will but but yeah you can yeah Yeah, i would love it but like what what was it like what what did you change in your life like i know you changed your physical health did you did you you do affirmation did you start reading did you start like what what about it did you decide like yo i got a purpose i'll move forward like like how did you make that you know you know what what i used to say uh i don't want to be fat no more yeah i i probably yo i used to and then when i bought the bike i was like Remember, I grew up with a father who suffered from um, substance abuse. Right. Smoking crack. And um, so bike riding and shit, I would do to escape. Right. I would just go ride my bike somewhere and be gone for hours. I didn't eat. I didn't do anything. I'd just be out. Mm-hmm. So I started riding my bike. And then I look up and I rode 22 miles. Right. And then I say, damn, I'm tired. It's time to go. They're like, no, nah, you can ride another mile. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be fat. I don't want to be fat. And I transformed my thinking of sympathy, uh self-loathing mm. and worthlessness to you are doggy diamonds you are about to rebuild like the bionic man you're Defining gonna wear yourself. shades yeah you're mm. gonna lose weight. i'm telling you this yeah. was all in my mind you're gonna wear shades you're gonna lose weight you are about to just change everything about you, you. yourself and this shit yeah. gonna be crazy watch how you look that's fire and then when it started coming to form, I was like, motherfucker, Fuck it. I'm it's, doing it. It's happening. But I didn't tell nobody yeah. what I was going to do because the first thing people do is say, yeah. how you going to do that? Yeah. You can't do that. No, no, no. Keep that shit so if keep, I tell you I can fly, shit, motherfucker, yeah, I'm going to fly, fly. right fly. past you too and right. spit or piss. You know <laughs> what I'm shit. saying? Yeah, or yeah. shit. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> so it, it starts with you. Right. When people ask me, how did you lose weight? I said the biggest weight I lost was the weight that was on my mind. Mm. You got bars. I carried the burden of so much on me that it weighed me down mentally mm. and then it manifests itself physically Physical. because we are emotional eaters. We either mm. eat food is a drug. And food tastes good as a yeah. motherfucker it's, too. It's a it's a it's a it's a dopamine yeah. hit. It's a yeah, dopamine yeah, yeah, exactly. Hit. It's like I need I need something to munch on. Yeah. And because, there's always some fuck I, shit. I need something to just feel good in a yeah, moment. What's yeah. the quickest, most yep. shallow satisfaction? Yep. Yep. Eat this. So know? so what I did was I started saying, um, you know what? Yo, start reading more. Started reading books. Just started just sitting there thinking to myself, like, picture yourself this, picture that, picture this, picture how you would look. Damn, what if your face was smaller? Like, how would you look? Visualizing. Damn, you, you're you size 44 pants. You ain't wear 34 since you was like 16. Yeah. Yo, you could get in a 34 again. That'd be hmm. crazy. That'd right. be crazy. So then I started looking at the scale. Then I was like 260, and I'm like, oh, shit, I lost it's fucking 30, 40, 40 pounds. pounds. But you still 260. Yeah. Hmm. Still what fighting. could you do? Yeah. What could you do? Keep going. I had got down to 179, and I said, nah, you look like you smoke crack. And people started, some dudes in the hood started talking to me a little crazy. Like, Yeah, you frail ass. Yeah, I'm like, yo, who, who you? Yeah. And I started realizing it was, I got cold. I never used to be cold. I used to be yeah. hot and sweaty and shit. I started feeling the cold. skinny and healthy. So yeah, I started yeah. feeling the cold. I'm like, hold on, um, damn, I, I don't <laughs> have no meat. Yeah, I don't got now. no meat, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> then I started saying, okay, what, this is some of the things you can do to maintain. Uh, just change the way you think, bro. Mm. Change the way you think. Change, change the way you handle people and change the way you let people handle you. Mm. Because like I said, I, I come from violence. When reason why I laugh at your story too, when I was about three or maybe four years old, they put boxing gloves on us. We fought in the living room. We was the entertainment. We you know, fought. You know so we, we grew up, that's yeah. what I'm saying. We yeah. grew up fighters like we just grew up what pow you know what i'm Mm -hmm. saying so as i got a certain age 
when when me and my cousins, when we and it, my family is all men. Mm. So you fighting anyway because yeah. you're in the house fighting, and now we go outside, and if you mess with this family, you we all fighting. fucking you up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's how we grew up. So now being a grown man, sometimes I'm on the internet, and people be like, yo, Doggy Dimes, and I see you, I'm going to smack the shit out of you. I be like... Oh, it's the internet. It's the internet. No, but no, my, yeah, yeah. my first reaction is, <laughs> like, what? yo, meet me at Best Buy in an hour. Yeah, I'll yeah. be there and I'm going to whip your ass. Buy you know Best what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, so, you, you know, so I have, to, yeah, I have to adapt to the world that I'm in mm-hmm. and realize, yo, this shit is not real. What's real is this. Yeah. I can pinch what you myself. Do with you. What I do with is yeah. real. Yeah. I manifest what I want. Right. Not what people want for me. Exactly. People say, yo, Man, this person got this. This person's on title. This person revolt. Man, that's supposed to be you. I say, nah, what's going to be for me is what's going to be for me. I didn't do anything wrong. It was a level of self-acceptance. My journey is yeah. my journey. Yeah. And what we talked about off camera mm-hmm. was when I get it, then I'm going to pop that champagne. And yep. now I'm still a work in progress. It. Yeah. You understand but, what but I'm saying? But you're celebrating yeah. each each. Every step day is a celebration. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Every day. So when people be like... Yo, take those fucking shades off. No, I'm cool, nigga. Yeah, yeah. Because I wasn't cool. Just like the emoji. Yeah, yeah, I feel, you know what I'm saying? Now I feel cool. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I, I got, look, man, look where I'm at. Look what building we're in Look right what now. we're doing. Yeah. People don't understand. Like, you're up in here. You see what I'm doing. People don't get, they don't let people like us sit here mm-hmm. and talk our talk and control our narrative. They control the force. They give us stuff. Yeah. We're talking about health. We're talking about mental health. We're talking about abuse. We're talking about shit that we've been through. Life, yeah. People don't. These conversations ain't what people want to hear. Need to happen more yeah. because mm-hmm. because you could have been in here. You could have went in on such and such. I could have yeah. asked you about this guy. Yeah. To, we could we could go there. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, nah, yeah. it's more people going through this than they, they are can, that. Yeah, because mm-hmm. then we're pandering to that side instead of trying to help. Going you know? to the dark side. Yeah, and yeah. I used to, you know, you ever watch Star Wars? Have I ever watched Star Wars? No, I figured that. Yeah, sure. Because um, <laughs> but remember Anakin? Yeah. I used to always say, yo, I feel like I'm going to the dark side. Yeah. And I really, really understood why he turned into. I, I love the perspective because when you see it from his side, it makes sense. Because we've been there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I was tired of suffering loss. Yeah. So it made me. Str- I, I, you, you took the strength over the who you were. Yeah. You know exactly. what I mean? Like I'd rather be strong. And not myself. It's su- and, and not be, suffer the, loss yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah. You know what and, I mean? and that's and that's see, that's what I had to do because I remember saying it was at one point in my life, I'm like, yo, I'm about to turn into Darth Vader. I'm a Jedi though. Mm-hmm. But I'm about to go fuck full, the force. Full Sith mode. Yeah, I'm going, yeah, yeah, I'm going over there yeah. because look at the rewards over there. Mm-hmm. Look at when you don't give a fuck. I, I care. Too yeah, sometimes. And I like care so much, much yeah. I neglected me. Yeah. So then I started saying, wait. Worry about, about yourself. yourself. Worry about yourself. Worry about yourself. You always worried about if everybody else ate, if but you're starving. You worry about me. I want everybody to smile. I'm the type of person. I live in a house with everybody. I come in with gifts for everybody, but nobody don't buy me shit. Yeah. But as long as you can say, "Oh, this is nice," and I'm like, "Yeah, I did it good today." But oh. then, then I started realizing, damn, like your credit card is ran yeah. the fuck out. Who gonna pay that shit now? And, and but I wanted everybody to be smile. Happy, yeah. But and I realize yeah, that in people feeling. and people who and people who find it hard to be happy or to satisfy themselves, they get like even me, like I'm a people pleaser. I realized that. Yeah. And a lot of that was because I got gratification out of making other people happy because I didn't know how to make myself happy. Exactly. You know what I mean? And when you dip that's cool. That's good when you have balance in it. It's bad when you tip over the scales and you start letting people take advantage of you or you let or you lower your self worth. You know what so I mean? So for the fans, um what what are some of the things that you're using? And what are some of the tools that you're using right now to overcome some of the obstacles mentally that you've right. gone through? Yo, it's uh, affirmations. I know it uh-huh. sounds corny, but, no, it, but it's true. It's like real. The, yeah, it's a real thing. Like you, the way, You're the, casting a spell. Yeah, like the way you speak to yourself. And you mm-hmm. got to realize that when you speak to yourself, it starts subconsciously. Like if you think about like, oh, I want to do this new business venture, then you start feeling bad. It's because in your mind, you ask yourself the question, can I do this? And your mind answered no. You know what I mean? You have to fundamentally change that language. And you do that by unwiring this code. So I know, okay, I have to kind of like eliminate, like really sit down, think about my life and Mm -hmm. go, what's adding to my life in the way that I want it to grow and what's taking it away? 
how much time am I using? How much of my time? We all get 24 hours. How much of my time am I using for distractions? How much of that is productive? You know what I mean? And once I once you really sit down and come up with that plan and actually think about yourself, then after that it's about action. Like I don't I don't I don't hang out with people that make me feel lower or I feel like I don't you hang know, out with nobody. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like you have to you have to you have to make me feel like like we're on the same page or you're adding to my life. Like I don't want that energy around me. I read the books that say the things I wanna hear. I read the, the I watch the shows that say the things I wanna be like. Like I kinda like engulf myself in this growth. You know what I mean? My hardest part there is finding the balance. You know what I'm saying? Like the, ba- you know, like but between enjoying yourself and, and trying to grow yourself. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Like it, there's that, you know, and if you can mesh those worlds perfectly, that's, that's, that's amazing. But I will say that reading, they say, they used to say, uh, I heard the saying, if you want to hide something from it, if you want to hide something from a nigga, put it in a book. Facts. You know what I'm saying? I think a lot of us don't read enough. You know, I think uh, f- through reading, I found out more about myself. And we're not about talking people. about the phone. We're talking uh, yeah, about actual physical yeah, actual, yeah, books. Yeah, books. Yeah, yeah, like a book. And there's yeah. a lot of self-help books. There's one I read called Unfuck Yourself. I don't, and that, yeah, that yeah. is powerful. You know what I'm saying? Things like that. But there, there's, yeah, between the reading and I think think uh, like you said physical stuff like working out like bi- biking was your get a uh, yes. boxing fighting is my uh, yeah, 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 is, yeah. is my release and um, you think since you was what two? Yeah, 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 yeah 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 you know but like it, it's my favorite thing in the world yeah. like to, to train and to, and to spar MMA martial arts all that stuff and I realized that when you're physical your, your mind and your body is like a cycle you know what I mean when mind control when, the yeah, body yeah mind control the body and the body empowers the mind like Facts. it makes it easier you're, you're empowering your tool you know because you got a really strong mind with a fucked up body if you're legs don't work no matter how much you want your legs to work it's not going to move you have to make your body catch up to your mind that's why when you have people who get older all the oldest people in the world the Rothschilds all these people they want to figure out how to get their brain and put it into a younger because yeah. it, their bodies can't keep that get up. out shit yeah yeah, yeah their it, bodies it, can't yeah, keep yeah, up with yeah, their brains yeah and right now we all you know i need to empower my body more i need to feel more energized i don't want to fight myself to improve so when you when you when you get yourself uh healthy uh, then it works, and I think the biggest thing, the biggest thing, is uh, scheduling your time. I think a schedule is is really knowing what you're doing, like knowing what you're yeah, supposed yeah, yeah, to be yeah, doing, yeah, yeah. and timing it out. You really have enough time in a day to not only be productive but also to be get happy. Rest. Yeah, you know, get, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Cause, like, because what I do, um, I I normally besides the last two days, because my throat was hurting a little bit. That's why you heard me coughing off camera. Mm. But um. I go to the gym every day. Yeah. And people say, you ain't got to work out every day. I say, well, it's more for my mind than it is my body. It's just so happy that my body benefits. Mm-hmm. And I love to walk. I don't walk from Harlem to Brooklyn. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like Taking literally. the scenery. With like, no music or nothing. Yeah. Just walking, just looking. You know what I'm saying? Just discovering what I miss so long being 300 pounds. Mm. Where the fuck you walking 300 pounds? You're not walking anywhere, obviously. To the, to the fridge. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So now, or you going <laughs> but but when you're 300 pounds, you'll walk two miles for some ice cream yeah, or some yeah. chicken. Like, yeah, yo, you go ahead. Yeah. Go, so, yeah. so you start saying, you know what, if I could put the energy in going to get that, to do that, I yeah. could go the energy to go here. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So it's just really just positive, affi- positive Pos- affirmations. Keeping positive, yeah. And positive affirmations is just really just basically telling yourself, what you're doing yeah. and what not what you're gonna do mm-hmm. what you're doing like exactly. yo today I'm, I'm getting up this. and yeah. I'm doing this I'm gonna be strong I'm a, yeah, like, I was on um, I was on Instagram and t- I said I'm walking to 42nd Street today it's the first time I ever did it I said I'm walking to 42nd Street and I live downtown Brooklyn I said I'm walking to 42nd Street today and then I said, damn, you just put your foot in your mouth. How the fuck are you going to walk to 42nd 40 40 Street? And then I said, you know what? You said you are going to do it. So do it. Now you're going to do it. Go get you a big uh, big liter of water. Mm-hmm. And I walked across the bridge. And I was on 14th Street. Then I'm on 23rd. I'm like, yo, I'm like, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. here. And it's crazy. Then when I got there, I was like, yo, I did it. You <laughs> uh-huh. know what I'm saying? So then I started realizing why white people climb mountains and shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, this it's is that my sense of, It's a sense of accomplishment. Exactly. And chasing those, it, it's it's really amazing. Like giving yourself smaller goals. Like not That's just getting I'm the telling. big goals, yeah, but yeah. giving those those little milestones, yep, that yep. sense of accomplishment. It's big for people, yep. man. And like, then I had the apps that show how many steps I walk. I'm like, damn, I yeah. walked 20,000 steps right. today. It's lit. I walked 12 miles. That's a fact. It's lit. So then I started posting it. Then people started saying, yo, man, I lost 10 pounds because of you. And then I started seeing the effect that I'm having on others. People. Yeah. And I said, you know what? This is bigger this than is me. This is bigger than me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? This is bigger than me. And this is bigger than uh, just how I feel because look how other people are telling me that they're changing their life because they see me. You're leading what I example. did. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's why well, I ain't going to say his name because everybody think I'm attacking him. But um, that's why I said about dude, the tweet that I yeah, had about yeah. dude. But, um, 
you know, I I, I I prefer this conversation with you over music. Yes. Because music comes so secondary to our mental health. Yeah. Even though it's one of the releases. But this is I, I think, think and I think our mental state is what makes the music. Yeah. You feel me? Like so it's it's it, it all it all ties in. And it just yeah. gives us more life. Yeah. That's more life. Fact. And and for the for the masses of people that's gonna hear to see this, they're gonna be like I would have never thought he was going through that because I go through this. Remember, I said to you, yeah. you sound just like me. Yo, no, when you're describing something, that's yeah. why I'm like, definitely just keep in contact yeah, yeah, afterwards because yeah, yeah. it's, it's rare that I meet someone who's able to articulate it in a way that's like, I and feel it's not like afraid. I said it. afraid. It's not afraid. Yeah. Because that's the thing, too. You know, we think mental illness is, yo, he was in taboo, the hood eating taboo. the shit. Yo, yeah. He dug in his ass and ate it. Yeah, He's crazy. Yeah. You have to be nuts. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sometimes the most insane person is in a room like this. Yeah, just chilling. They ain't say nothing. Cold, cool, quiet, calm. coolness. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, but, word. but I will Feeling say in nothing. our defense, <laughs> it's a thin line between insanity and genius, genius though. bro. Because yeah. I, cause, but the genius is a manifests bit itself. Yeah, yeah, the genius. Because because when well, sometimes you rap, it, but how the fuck they get all the words in there? Yeah, and then sometimes people can wonder how I could do an interview with no notes. Yeah, because you no, see yeah, some people want this shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know what I'm saying? It, yeah. So um. That's what it's give. Let's give all the people all your social media how definitely. they can stay in contact with you. Almost definitely. I'm primarily on Instagram, so I'm gonna tell people that Dragons and Rivers. That is the Instagram. Twitter is only Chris Rivers. Uh, we got ChrisRiversUniverse.com. That's the website that has everything. And get G2. That's G I T U. That's the newest album out right now. Everywhere. This uh, acronym for Greatest in the Universe, gotcha. which is an affirmation I used to tell myself gotcha. to remind myself I could be great. So everybody get that. Yeah. Are you on Facebook? Facebook as well, Chris Rivers. Chris definitely. Rivers. definitely. So Chris yeah. Rivers yeah. and um, um Instagram is Dragons and Rivers. Dragons and Rivers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Liza, how could they get in contact with you? Uh, well, I got a new Instagram page. Ooh. Do you want to shout it out? Um, I know you I know you yeah. I mean, yeah, I deleted my old page, but I was having identity issues. Wow. <laughs> but I got a new page, I am Liza Rios on Instagram as well as a fan page on Facebook, I am Liza Rios. The pop up shop, um, how did that go? Did it go well? Which I came one? to the pop up shop. Oh yeah, when well, well, I okay. got there a little late. Thank okay. you. No, you remember what I'm talking about? Which yeah, the y'all had a pop up shop and um, Reece, what's the area? And, and no, this was, yes. yeah, yeah, a while yeah, ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I was there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you mean this was years ago? Oh no, it's all years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I remember that. That's that was. I mean, yeah, it turned out good. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It is what it is. Shout out to the sisters. Uh, yeah, yeah. Shout out to my sister yeah. Star, the Star Reels on Instagram, and Nessie Reels also on Instagram. Vanessa and Also, Star. Ether Reels. Ether I'm about to say it in Yeah, you can't forget yeah. Ether Reels. Ether, that shit to make your soul burn slow. Don't say Ethan. He will kill you. Right. It's Ether Reels. Yeah. Oh, he don't say, you got to say his whole name? No, no. You got to say Ether. A lot of people yeah, think lot it's people Ethan. Yeah, a lot of people mistake his name in school. Ethan. They say Ethan. Ethan. Yeah, yeah, oh, you know, I it's know it's Ether. Ether. Like the non song. Yeah, yeah. Got you. And our cast name is Illy which is short for Illmatic so wow. if you see Illy so the whole block, house is just hip hop yeah, yeah 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 you know what I'm saying so that's what it is yo I'm Doggy Diamonds Doggy Diamonds no filter we out of here make sure you follow me on all social media at Doggy Diamonds I will not follow, follow you back if you just make memes <laughs> or if you twerk or any of that stuff I don't I don't like none of that stuff if you just <laughs> on there and you just want to bill showing your ass and titties this does nothing for me I'm not gonna follow you Big you can also buy any of my merch my mug right here and my shirts and everything on shop Doggy Diamonds TV. That's what it is. We out of here. Peace. And make yeah. sure, make sure you download this podcast mm-hmm. on radio.com, the free app, iTunes, Spotify, uh, Stitcher, TuneIn. I'm everywhere. Just put in Doggy Diamonds No Filter. It's going to come up. YouTube, Doggy Diamonds TV. Peace. Yeah. Peace. Yeah. That was awesome. I'm going to yeah. definitely, uh, I'm going to definitely catch me and get me a, get me a cup. Yeah. So mm-hmm. my coffee yeah. in the morning. Make sure you uh, click subscribe to this on iTunes. Go to radio.com. Download the app. It's free. You can hit a podcast on there. You can see the video on YouTube, youtube.com slash doggy diamonds TV. Until next time, peace.